Today, I want to tell you guys the story of how I studied a thousand plus hours for my med school finals. I want to tell you guys why I did it, how I did it, and why I probably won't ever do it again. So let's rewind a little bit. About a year ago, COVID-19 broke out and everything went kind of crazy. My med school closed, the UK went into its first lockdown, and there were just loads of things that were changing. Now, in the midst of all this, I still had to sit for my finals and not being able to go out, go for placements, or really do anything. I just thought to myself, why don't I just throw myself at this and see what happens? Now, let's just set the scene a little bit. So I was in my fourth year at med school and this was the start of my clinical years. So up to this point, I had done two pre-clinical years where we really go into the science and things. And then I did one year, which was called an IBSC, which basically was a year where you could really go into one area of science and then do some research there. And then now, at this point, uh, when I started my fourth year, that was when we could do all the clinical stuff. So you could do all the stuff that really made you feel like a doctor. So this is when I could bust out my stethoscope, engraved with my name, and basically we were finally let loose in the wards. The rotations that we had for fourth year pretty much covered most of general medicine. So in term one, I had rotations like cardiology, respiratory medicine, vascular, and A&E. And then in term two, I had orthopedics, rheumatology, GI and anesthetics, so a lot more surgical. And in term three, I had neurology, uh, endocrine, renal. Maybe I'm missing something because it's been a while, but I think that was pretty much term three, yeah. Oops. Okay. Whew. Okay. So for me, the pandemic hit when we were in term two, uh, towards the end of it. So by the time we hit term three, everything was online. Now with everything being online and being stuck at home, I just thought, why don't I just, yeah, really throw myself at this and just go ham at this. Essentially, this content is the fundamentals to most conditions you're gonna see as a doctor. And I'd be a doctor at this point in about two years. So I thought, okay, if I could have really good fundamentals, then that should really set me up for everything else. If I'm completely honest, if I go back to that time, I remember being quite anxious and quite overwhelmed with the amount of content that I had to cover. Obviously looking back at it now, it's much easier to be like, whew, okay, that actually wasn't as bad. But in the moment, it definitely felt pretty bad. And I think I realized through this experience, it's really not just about spending a long time studying. There's so much more to it than that. Now, after a few years at med school, I'd say I'm pretty good at studying for long hours. So from about the 15th of April to July 15th, I had three months where I pretty much couldn't go out, couldn't do much. And I just thought to myself, I'm gonna study anywhere from 10 to 12 hours every day for 30 days for three months. Now, at this point, I've definitely had times where leading up to exams, you know, I build up to these 12 hours, but I've never done like this kind of schedule for this long. Now, with all these different specialties, I knew that I wanted to try and break up my day uh, according to these different ones. Now, maybe in the morning, I might do some cardiology. In the afternoon, I might do some orthopedics. And in the evening, I might do some neuro. So how my typical day would work is I would probably get up usually at around 8.30. I'd have some breakfast, have some tea, which I feel like is a thing I picked up after being in the UK for so long. And then I would go into a sort of three hours work session where I was doing three cycles of Pomodoro, uh, 45 minutes of work, 15 minutes of break. And I would focus in on one specialty. And then I would do this up till lunch. And after lunch, I would take a break for about an hour and I would just kind of take my mind off of work and just relax. And then after lunch, I would do five Pomodoro sessions, which would last five hours. And then afterwards, I would have dinner for another hour and just kind of relax. And then I would do another four hours after that where I'd be working until about 11 and doing four Pomodoro sessions. And then I would go to bed at about midnight. So I would give myself maybe an hour to just have some downtime, just relax and just take my mind off the work. Now, some things that kind of helped me through this, uh, as I guess kind of part of how I did it was, I definitely tried to find things which were kind of like mini rewards uh, for working this long. So for me, my sort of guilty pleasure was anime and um, I guess that makes sense for why I made the anime door video. If you guys haven't seen that, check it out in the description box below. But I remember starting off Haikyuu, which is this anime about volleyball. It's amazing. If you guys haven't seen it already, check it out. It's great. And I remember starting off that season one, episode one, and just kind of spreading that along the two, three months I had. And I would say if I was my teenage self, I probably wouldn't have the self-control to kind of spread it out, but I somehow managed to do it. And for me, it was something where the show was so good that I always looked forward to watching it. So it genuinely was such a good reward whenever I was having lunch or having dinner or, you know, just at the end of the day that it really did motivate me to work harder. 
Also, I think like maybe it's the show itself, but I find that sports animes are like really uplifting and motivating and really positive. Like you see these characters go through all these adversities, they go through their training, they, you know, they lose and then they suddenly climb back up that mountain and they win. And it, it is kind of inspiring. And I guess within that span of time, not being able to go out, having that sort of motivation really helped me. And also I think as a side effect, I, after watching the anime, I really wanted to play volleyball and even bought a volleyball and that I've used only once so far, but hopefully when the weather gets better, I can use it a little bit more. The second thing I did, which kind of helped me get through through these long days uh, was I always tried my best to keep in touch with like my friends and my family. For my friends, we would sometimes have Netflix parties or like, you know, sessions where we would watch movies together and we'd play games. And uh, for my family, I'd call them pretty often, pretty much every day just to check up on how everyone was doing. And I remember during this time, obviously health was like the biggest concern because everyone was worried about what was going around. And so it was just good to know that everyone was doing safe and it was also good to just check in on everyone. And so that really helped me stay grounded and also kind of add some variety to my day and something which just wasn't work. And the third thing I did was something a bit different to what I usually, uh, which was I tried to keep an eye on my diet. And what I mean by that is, so when you think about foods, especially carbs, there's certain carbs which have a high glycemic load. And when you hear that, basically what it means is these are foods, you know, like rice, like potatoes. After you eat them, you're gonna get this big spike of energy because your glucose levels just go up. But with that big spike, you also get a really big fall. And what this feels like for you is, you know, that sluggish feeling you get in the afternoon after like a big meal. So what I try to do is I try to focus on not eating an excessive amount of carbs and being careful of what carbs I had as well. So, you know, it's good to kind of pay attention to these things when you know you're going for these long sessions. But at the same time, you want to make sure that you are eating enough because you got to keep fuel for your brain. Even if you're just sitting at your desk studying, you're still using a lot of energy. Your brain uses loads of glucose. And also I feel like you wanna make sure that you're not always just snacking. You wanna try and make sure that you're eating properly. Some people when they study will forget to eat. That's not good either. And some people when they study, they might overeat cause they're stressed. So I think it's about finding that balance as well. For me, that sluggish feeling would kind of make me wanna just have like an afternoon nap. And those afternoon naps, you know, you aim for it to be like 15 minutes, but they end up being like an hour. But yeah, so I think it's good to pay attention to these things and you wanna try and keep things balanced. Now, after all that studying, I got a result that I was really proud of and I was really happy with, but looking back at it, I realized that that probably wasn't the best way of doing things and I wanna talk about why. Some of the things I learned from that whole experience was that when it comes to working, when it comes to studying, it's more important for you to study smart and hard and not just study hard. Now, there's a saying where if you wanna master any skill, you have to spend 10,000 hours on your craft. Now, I definitely love the mentality of, you know, spending that time working on yourself and improving things. And I definitely put in the time with this exam. But looking back, if I was to say I spent an hour or two less each day, I genuinely don't think the outcome would have changed that much. There's this curve that I think of that kind of illustrates this that I'm getting from my econ days in like GCSE and IB, which is the law of diminishing returns, which basically shows that, you know, with every additional input that you have into whatever you're doing, that you're getting smaller and smaller returns each time to the point where actually when it becomes inefficient, you're gonna to start to go down. But basically when it comes to this is you can work hard and you should obviously work hard, but after a certain point, you're not gonna get that much more out of it if you're just forcing yourself to sit at that desk without trying to do other things as well. Now from this experience as well, something else I learned was that I learned that I had to try and strike a better balance. Now, given the lockdown, it was really hard to do pretty much anything. Uh, I don't even know what the date is today, but in 2021, with things getting better, with shops opening, gyms opening, uh, with the UK easing out of lockdown and going into the different stages out. I know that for this exam year and for, for, for my, you know, revision period, I'm not going to do the same thing again. I definitely want to try and make time for the things that I really enjoy, whether that be going for walks, uh, you know, spending time with friends, going to the gym, working out, doing whatever that really makes me happy. Because I feel like in life, it's important to work hard. It's important to get better at the things you care about and the things that, you know, you're passionate about and the thing that you're going to probably work in. But at the same time, you as a person, are so much more than just what you're studying. You're so much more than what your job is. You are you and you, there's so many other aspects to you. If you don't spend time on those different aspects as well, then you're only gonna grow as a student or as a, as a 
for me as a doctor or whatever and I'm gonna neglect those other sides to me that maybe when I'm 40 as a consultant I'm not gonna be that good at all the other things I like so it's important that you make sure that you look after yourself and that you also spend time doing the things that you love. Another thing which I learned was, I think I learned that I have to be kind to myself when it comes to studying and working and things like that. So, right, so during the pandemic, I think we saw a rise in a lot of study videos. In fact, I even made one showing you guys what my 12 hour study routine was during exams. And this was something which I said from the start is something which I don't do often because first of all, we don't have that kind of time you know, regularly, but it's something which I was trying to do because I was trying to learn a lot of content for, for all these different specialties. I think with all these study videos, there is this pressure where some people may compare their own schedules with someone else's schedule online and then feel like they're not doing enough. And the thing is, everyone's different. And I think if you're watching these videos, the best thing you can try and take from them is, oh, okay, what are some things which they did, which maybe I could try and include? Uh, what are some ways they maybe try and focus their time a little bit better? But I wouldn't use it as a sort of comparison where I'm like, ah, oh, okay, this person worked 10 hours or worked 12 hours and I only did eight. So therefore, I'm not doing enough. That That's really not the case. Someone could have done 12 hours and not done like 12 hours of like focus work. You can never really compare it just off face value. I think all these sort of pressures links in with the idea of toxic productivity, which is basically when you're kind of moving away from the benefits of productivity and you're moving to something which is a bit more harmful and a bit more damaging. Productivity, simply put, is great it's amazing but the best way to really think about it is how can i be more thoughtful with how i spend my time i think the best way to you know look at these videos is to use it as a sort of inspiration maybe motivation and you can pick up some of the tips that they use but ultimately productivity and all these productivity videos it really is just about trying to be more thoughtful with your time and how you spend that time now if you were to ask me would i do this all again I'd probably say no. And I think I've realized from this experience that I don't need to spend probably this excessive amount of time just studying. I probably need to find a better balance. But also I think logistically, I'm never gonna get three months again, just like this, where I'm just at home and I don't have to do anything and have those kind of responsibilities and whatnot. So logistically, I don't think it'll happen. And also I feel like in the future, I probably would wanna find a better balance. But anyways, that pretty much wraps up this video. I hope you guys found that useful. I hope you guys learned from my experience. Thank you guys so much for watching and until then i'll see you guys in the next one peace bye bye